real swear ethics. My definition, it, it may not apply to you. Well, that's Everyone okay. You can have your own it. definition. Well, it's based upon, it's a way of, of life, a way you base your life upon. I derive my ethics from my morals. If, I'm, if I feel my morals are upright, good, mm -hmm. sincere, honest, just, mm -hmm. then I should base my ethics upon them and how I act and interact with people. Okay, I'm going to grab onto the first part of what you said. It's the way we do things. That's a paraphrase of what you said, but wasn't that the beginning of your sentence? It's the way we do things? Okay, the way we do things. And Tony, what did you add? I said that there were standards that we live our lives by. Okay, there's standards we live our lives by. It's the way we do things. Who else wants to add on to that? It's our ideals and principles. Values. Our values, our ethics are the way we do things based on our morals, our morals and our values. Would you agree come together? Okay. And because we all have all of those things we've already talked about, different perceptions, different ways we're brought up, we do have a different set of ethics. Do ethics change? Sometimes I hope they do because I, I felt that there have been people that have been very biased in one particular way that I, my perception is that they are biased and uh -huh. that over time I've seen them change and that if that is what you're saying is a habit or a habitual way um, maybe they do okay so answers maybe ethics change now in a utility of uh, roughly 2,000 people spread out in many different areas if 2,000 people have 2,000 sets of personal ethics what happens when everybody comes together <laughs> That's right. That is exactly right. So what the organization must do is establish organizational ethics. The ethics of the utility have been embodied in certain policies that have been written, labored over by many people, of how we shall relate to each other. And the ethics of the organization are embodied in the policies. The policies we're going to go through in just a few minutes. And it's really very simple. You either work with the policies, because those are the policies or the ethics of the workplace that you're in, or you disagree with the policies and you work through your elected officials to change them. There is a mechanism established for change. Or you take a third route, which is you don't like the policies, you don't want the policies to be there, and so you get a pain about right here in your belly, you get one about right here in your neck, it usually creeps up in your head, and that war is going on right in here. That war is going on within somebody who wants to change something. And since I don't know how to change it, I'm just going to yell at Paul all day. Since I don't know how to change it, I'm not going to train Debbie or see that she does not get a promotion. Since I do not wish to accept the ethics of the organization that I work for, I will subvert them. I will take them under the table and underground. I'll get you. I'll get you, because I don't like red-headed women. <laughs> and this policy says that red-headed women have a right to work at the utility. Right there, and all my life, I've been told that red-headed women are just a stepchild of the race. <laughs> <laughs> you will sharpen pencils till you drop. <laughs>
We are on what those body of laws say, and then we'll stay on that for a bit. We'll get in, we're going to spend some time on interpretation of particularly sexual harassment, because there's a lot. But it's key. The law, the courts, judge on the, from the eyes of the person it's happening to, the victim. Was it unwanted? In which case, it's illegal. Okay? It is, sexual harassment is illegal under the following conditions. Hiring, that's obvious. Sleep with me and you've got the job, right? Uh, firing, if you don't sleep with me, you're through. Uh, if it unreasonably interferes with a uh, person's ability to work, there's a lot of safety litigation, especially in non-traditional work. If there's been hustling and it just, you, you know, if that kind of thing is happening to you day in and day out, uh, you get fuzzy and unable to do your work. You know, if someone's always over on top of you and you can't, you have no room to do your work and they can prove it, it's illegal. If it creates a uh, hostile, offensive, intimidating work environment, both number three and number four are usually repeated offenses. You know, if you're constantly whistled at, if someone's always pinching your butt, if someone's always asking you out for a date, not just once or twice, which could be flattering, Robert, <laughs> but every day, and you say, no, 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 and it goes on for six months. I'm particularly sensitive on that because I got caught up in the sexual McCarthy era that City Life went through around April or May. And, uh, not allowed to defend yourself, uh, uh, no witnesses are ever present, uh, accusations, uh, a, a canvassing of everybody in your work area to try to get hold of the least little bit of information they possibly can on you so that they can proceed against you of the whole works. Yeah. I think that a lot of why we are doing this and spending time on these issues is they have been blown out of proportion as far as people's reactions to them. I will stand here and say that kind of behavior unwanted sexual advances and that kind of thing. She has no place in the workplace and should be gone forever. But it can be taken care of so simply. I'd also like to make the point that it's very hard for me to check my sexuality in at the door when I come into the workplace. And by that I don't mean uh, the blatant sorts of things that have been going on in the past, but just sort of my whole demeanor and... I mean, uh, sex is a loaded issue. It's like there isn't one of us that doesn't feel sexual attraction towards other people. That's okay. It's just that there's no place for certain kinds of behavior at work, and we'll spend some time trying to find with that, trying to the fine line work through what what those behaviors are. Yeah, yeah. I think that 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 you are with us on that, at least as far as thinking that's important. And I think. in agreement that the first step might be a good first step is to say candy this is what I saw what does it all mean what what is there a problem here what's going on question point she that supervisor say this is what I saw first no okay no there's no problem no. Policy says that is not true because he saw something. Listen. You're going to open yourself wide open. No, he saw something that was going on that was not a productive work, work environment. I'm not saying that he can walk up and say, I think I saw sexual harassment. <laughs> no. But he can say, 
something was going on between you. Is this creating a, a not productive work environment? I need to know some information. And all she can do is just say, I prefer to just handle this on my own. All right? Because if she doesn't come forward with it, when you first say, is there a problem? For you as a supervisor to push this, I, I feel it's inappropriate. Okay. What if you really thought that that might be happening? That might be then sexual harassment? Eye, then I would keep an eye on it and keep it to myself. Okay. Not that I'm going to tell Andy, I'm going to be watching. Okay. Or I'm going to walk up to Bill and I'm going to say, I'm going to be watching. Okay. Then so, what about this? You see, you've seen something in the work area, what you just saw. You suspect that it, it could be sexual harassment, but you don't know. You walk up to Candy and she says, no, I just don't want to make any trouble. I just, I, I don't want to talk about it. Are there any other options for a supervisor at that point? I just don't want to talk to you about it. Vicki? He could take Bill aside in his office and say that, you know, he saw something happening. You know, they were having some kind of a conflict and kind of probe Bill to see what, you know, what was going on or what he thought was going on. Okay. Is there anybody else who wants to respond to that? What if, um, he asked, if she said, I don't want to talk to you about it, if she said, she's going to talk to you about it. Okay. There's people back there hear that? She's no. saying, one, another strategy might be to say, would it make you feel more comfortable to talk to someone else, to another supervisor, to another woman, being, being conscious that this might be a situation in which you might not want to talk to that particular supervisor at that particular time. I'm just get, trying to get some different, different strategies. I'm sure that you want to stay confidential. It's like saying you've got to talk to somebody. You, I will promise we, I'll, I'll just keep it just between you okay. and I. Let's go talk about it. Then we'll decide ourselves and then okay. figure it out from there. Okay, so that might be another way to get in to someone who really We're, does not want know, to talk we'll about stay. it. All right. But one more point on this, okay? As the super, as Doug turned around, he saw this the two people apart arguing, all right? Uh, you have to take this into mind that maybe it isn't sexual harassment. Okay, you set the stage for us. We know what we were supposed to see, what we were supposed to comment on. Put yourself in Doug's position. He turns around, he sees an argument. He's hearing this, all right? Now, it could be an argument over... Uh, I don't want the report nine pages long. I think we should cut it down to six. But you're leaving out this important piece of information. That's what they could have been arguing about. Yeah, Nothing to do with people. sexual harassment. All right, but I'm going to ask people to tell me what the body language in that scene said. He heard what they were talking about. Well, you think he, you, your perception is that he heard that he heard her tell Bill to keep his hands off of her. Yeah, right. That's assuming he could hear that. I want. I want to. What was going on? It was obvious sexual advances. Period. I mean, look. Well, at if I, okay, so you're saying no. I don't think that it was obvious good. to Doug. I don't think that he heard all that. Because he was. He wasn't that. He wasn't that close to. No, me. Doug. I'm not saying Doug heard all that. Yeah. Well, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, we're trying to focus. Doug did hear. Candy, tell Bill, keep your hands off of me. Now, I don't care, regardless of whether it's sexual, physical fighting, or whatever, okay. that's not right But anymore. some people are what saying maybe he didn't, didn't hear it. Me. And all I'm trying to say is think about the video, please, and tell me what you saw. He hit it normal. What did you see, Evelyn? <laughs> all right, let's say that Doug didn't hear anything. What did he see? Eyes, eyes. What did he see? He saw Bill Toucher. He saw a so he turned around, it went like this. He saw a he turned around. From candy. And as he turned around, he turned around. <laughs> no. He saw that. He turned around and wanted to know from Kathy. <laughs> After 43 screenings, <laughs> I can tell you that he turns around as Bill says, you know that perfume you're wearing? It's really doing the job. The job it's supposed to. Then he turns. What does he see? He sees Candy's hand. Pushing Bill's hands off of her, telling her, I told you to keep your hands off of me. <laughs> I'm telling you. You know it's there. Why play game? He didn't touch her. He didn't touch her, though. They're right. He never touched her at that point. What I'm trying to say is, what I saw Candy do was. Yeah. 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 He doesn't know what's going on. Now, 
It's true. You can't, as a supervisor, go in and say, aha, sexual harassment. But I don't think that that, that means I really don't want to type this memo today. <laughs> we have, uh, we have a, a group of people that we work with on the East Coast, and they, it's in an area that there are a lot of women working and some men working. And they had one man who was making the rounds, basically harassing people, and, and people got knew about it, you know, it was kind of the story about be careful, don't ever go to the water fountain with you know who and, and, and so it was it was building up and building up and someone had the idea and went out and bought a box of whistles and gave everyone whistles, men and women in this whole unit. And any time that this person would go over and start messing around with one of the women, all the whistles would go off. <laughs> Stop the behavior cold. I need you to know one other piece of information that was quite stunning to Joe and myself and might be interesting for you. I think there is an assumption that if only we were, as women, assertive, if only we would draw the line sooner, we could get we could make this behavior stop. <coughs> I certainly am a proponent, as I said yesterday, of assertive behavior. There's no doubt about it. Statistically, acting on her own, being as assertive as we would want any person to be, a woman stands a 10% chance of stopping that behavior by herself. Statistically, with any support from her co-workers and especially from a person in a supervisory capacity, it jumps up to 90%. So it does become very important, as Chris said, that supervisor needs to do something. You can stop it right there with a word that says, this is the behavior that's inappropriate, this is what will not be condoned, this is what you can expect if it, if it happens again. So that's pretty stunning information, I think. Anything else from you all? Beverly? I have a question. What would happen if the, if the supervisor were the molester? I mean, that's a little bit harder to... Is it? It happens. Prove. And if you yeah. go to the supervisor, supervisor. <laughs> or you go straight to EEO and be ready to sign. Or you go to another supervisor. So oh, you recommend that then? This is the you know, to that's the that's the procedure. And it does happen. And it has happened. Many times. Any other questions regarding this? Or comments? The most important thing is that you that you're comfortable. We just need to see some of the things, some of the issues that might come up. All right? Anytime you want to stop, all you have to do is say cut or whatever. Cut. Okay? <laughs> Thanks for coming into my office, Candy. Uh, I noticed Bill really sort of hanging over you out there, and it looked like you were really uncomfortable. And I saw him had his hand on your shoulder and on your back, and was making some comments about your perfume and all. And looked to me like it was sort of bothersome. Uh, you know what? What were was your perceptions of what was going on? Well, was it an uncomfortable situation for you. It's not really that big of a deal. He, I'm sure he didn't mean anything by it. Well, it, uh, I saw you sort of uh, starting to push him off, and it, it concerns me because if we don't try to catch that kind of thing, you know, I, I've known Bill for some time, and he has a, a bit of a reputation for, for trying to put himself off on women. And um, I, I'm afraid if we don't, you know, if, if my perception is right, if that's what he was doing, um, my concern is that we try to get it uh, handled at this point, but I, I really need your perception about if it is putting you into an uncomfortable situation and making it more difficult for you to, to concentrate on your work and get the job done we're trying to do. Well, I kind of do wish he'd stop it, but I, I just, I don't think it's that, I think, you know, he'll just, you know, I don't want to make any trouble, and, and I think that he'll probably just knock it off. He'll, he'll get tired of it, and, you know, I, I just don't want to cause any friction. And, Okay, well, well, let me see if I got at least this much straight of what I was seeing. He did have his hand on your shoulder and on your back, is that correct? Yes. And he was sort of 
wrapping himself around you to show you what he wanted to do. Uh, did I see that right? I was sort of at the back of the room there. And, and I was just coming up, and he, he made some comment about uh, uh, your perfume was doing the job it was supposed to. Uh, did I hear that right? Was that? That's correct. OK. Well, I just wanted to make sure that I understood and I perceived what was going on uh, properly. And I am concerned enough about it that I'm going to talk to Bill and so, uh, get his perception about where he's going on. But I definitely think that for anybody, whoever it is in the office situation, that, that that's just not, it's, it's the kind of thing that just leads on to more difficult situations. And well, I, I don't I'm want gonna, Bill to be angry at me. I mean, we, we do have, have to work together quite a yeah. bit. And, and I, I don't want him to get in trouble because of me. Well, you, you may have to recognize, you know, I'm responsible for the work going on here, and I'm responsible to see that we all have a, a workable environment. And you may have to recognize that Bill possibly will get angry, and he possibly may direct that anger at you, and I'm going to be watching for those kinds of situations. And um, I know it's difficult for you to come, come forward and say anything, but you know, I want you to know that I will, I would love, really like to have you if, if this does turn into an anger situation for a while until we get it straightened out that, um, you know, if there are things that are becoming untenable for you as far as working uh, from Bill's standpoint, let me know. But I will be talking to Bill and I also will be continuing to observe to make sure that we, we get things leveled out right now. Cut. Okay. All right. <laughs> Take a second. You all did very well and also true to character, which is okay. Anything else that you that you feel that was particularly strong or maybe something that you wanted to have more of? They did this all off the top of their heads, and to be able to cover that much was really well done. But let's see if we can. I think it was good that the supervisor wouldn't just let it slide. That she showed apprehension. She didn't want to be. Receiving end of anger on Bill's part, and the supervisor didn't let it slip away. That he said, "Well, this is a very normal behavior. He will probably do this, uh, but I'm not going to let it go unnoticed." Normal behavior for him, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> right? I just want to be sure we don't ever get that <laughs> as normal behavior. But I think the spirit of it is acknowledging that that this could happen, and also hearing what she was going to say. And not, some supervisors might say, well, okay, I won't do anything this time, but next time. Yes. And I think it's very important, the first observation, to, to do something quickly and try and um, act on it immediately. Absolutely. That's what the whole thing is about. The supervisor has no option to do nothing. Why don't I, may I ask you all to reverse roles then? Sure. Okay. You be the supervisor. Good. You be Bill. Are you gonna be Bill? Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he was so smooth. I don't, I don't know if I can. Well, you got lots of different supervisors. We all we all <laughs> drink before we fall and before we walk. <laughs> before we fall. Okay. Yeah. You want? Would you be willing okay. to? Okay. Sure. All right. Now you have left a message on his desk, and he is coming into your office now. Okay. You want to take a second? Start whenever you like. You wanted to see me, Chief? Yeah, come on in, Bill. Uh, sit down. You know, I've been uh, kind of watching what's been going on in the office, and, and I noticed that uh, Candy sort of rebuffed you this afternoon. I beg your pardon? Well, it seemed to me that you were making some advances towards her and that, that she, was, she was pretty uncomfortable with that. Well, uh, you know, you know the reputation Candy has, Doug. You know, she's a real sensitive person, and I was just, you know, leaning down to show her some, some stuff. It's really hard to, you know, stand back three feet from her desk and point at a little square on graph paper and say, you know, you need to fill in that box. Well, as a... What, did she come in and complain about it? No, no. This is just, I'm strictly acting on my own observation, but it really does appear to me that, that you've stepped out of the boundaries of of office behavior, uh, I really feel it's inappropriate for you to be putting your hands on your coworkers and especially the female coworkers. 
Uh, I heard you allude to her perfume, and again, I think that that's really inappropriate office behavior. Oh, I, they're, they're just. I don't like to be flattered. Though. I've made you know, note of this. I'm going to tell you, as your supervisor, that I do feel it's inappropriate. I have made note of it. It won't go into your file, but I will be uh, be watching to see if this sort of behavior comes up again. And if it does, um, you know, I, I will have to uh, file a complaint against you as your supervisor that that you have. Uh, the duck, just stand up. You know, I'm I'm a real outward going person. You know, I I communicate with my hands, and I, you know, I walk up and I touch people when I'm talking to them. Does this mean now that I've got to go creeping around this office on eggshells? You know, like I gotta stay back, like I, you know, I can't be myself well, anymore. Well, I, I don't. I think that you might be uh, um, taking that a little too far, but I do think that we we both know that it is inappropriate to be putting your hands on the female workers or to be standing in such a way that your arms are around them and I think that we both know what that means it doesn't mean that you can't shake hands with the men or if the lady offers her hand that you can't shake hands with the women but it does mean not touching them on their shoulder not placing your hands over them not alluding to uh, their sexual provocation Especially, uh, you know, and especially in the case of Candy, since I have seen you make her nervous, and I did observe that, and I wanted to restate that I have made note of this, and if I do see it happen again, that I will have to act upon it, and, uh, you know, you may not like that, but that's the way it is, and I am the supervisor, and this is my job, so that's the way it is going to be. Well, I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.